The fight for our 70 centimeter ham radio band is far from over, but we have just scored a partial victory. So just a quick recap on the issues that are in play here that I've covered on the channel in a couple of previous videos over the last month or two. And that is that AST Space Mobile are looking to uh, deploy large scale satellites, direct to phone cellular service, and they wanted to use the 430 to 440 megahertz band for telemetry, tracking, and control across a 243 satellite constellation. Now, they've been doing this recently with around about five satellites already. But this spectrum, the 70 centimeter band, 430 to 440 megahertz, is a primary allocation in some areas of the world, in ITU region one especially. And uh, 70 centimeters is used extensively worldwide by amateur radio operators. So then on August the 29th, 2025, the FCC made the most recent decision, which was to grant AST a license, but only in a heavily restricted form. It's for 20 satellites only not their whole constellation. It's for emergency operations only, and it's for a 24-hour maximum window per event. And this is only if no other bands are available. So this is a partial victory for amateur radio operators. AST didn't get the broad blanket access that they were after. And there is here a uh, article which is on the IARU website which details some of the decisions that have been made in relation to the FCC Space Bureau uh, authorizing this particular license. Now of note the amateur radio community fought back there was over 2,500 comments filed by HAMS, ARRL, AMSEC, IARU and others from around the world as you can see they're written in this article. It speaks uh, about the technical and legal arguments that carried some weight that is that the other commercial satellite bands already exist for the purposes that they want, S-band, X-band, KA-band. And just using amateur spectrum sets a very dangerous precedent. So there was some ph philosophical arguments that were made. That was amateur radio serves emergency comms, STEM and experimentation. And that commercial encroachment can uh, undermine that mission of uh, the amateur radio service. And it was quite... Good that when I released a video on all of this, that there was quite a lot of interest and a lot of response from people in the comments and also who made the filings online to the FCC. So I think we really as amateur radio operators need to give ourselves a, a very good pat on the back that we've had this partial victory. So why did AST actually want 430 to 440 megahertz? Why was it so important? Well, their satellites are huge. They're uh, got a solar array of some of them proposed of 700 square meters. That is massive. Now, each of them need this telemetry tracking and control channels about 64 to 256 kilohertz wide. And they've already launched those five satellites using the amateur radio frequencies already. So this decision, why it actually matters is that the FCC acknowledged that amateur allocations are different from the commercial spectrum. And by limiting their operations to emergencies, that is AST Space Mobile's operations to emergencies, they implicitly admitted technical alternatives do exist for AST to actually look at. And it sets a regulatory precedent against further commercial encroachment. So some of the reaction has been good. AMSAT DL called this a greater partial success. But there is still a risk. AST can still operate on the amateur bands. Even though they do have these restrictions, they can still operate on the 70 centimeter band, but they can only do it at the moment with 20 satellites. So the thing that we need is we need to uh, be aware that the company may push for further access in the future. So what this means going forward is it's not a total victory. AST, they can still operate on these amateur bands, on the 70 centimeter amateur band using even if it is just for emergency purposes although they are restricted now we need to make sure that we're vigilant with this too because there may be still other commercial entities that want to try similar tactics to what ast space mobile have tried and gain access to the amateur radio band so we also need continued advocacy we need advocacy from the iaru from the arrl from the wia the rsgb the radio amateurs of canada all of the advocacy organizations, we need to be able to support them and they also need to be able to support us. So we uh, still need that going forward. Now, there is a call to action for us just for hams is to stay informed with these spectrum issues because it's not limited to 70 centimeters. 
We've also had 23 centimeters recently also become under threat, especially in Europe. And make sure that when these issues actually come up, that we file our comments with the FCC, the ACMA, whoever it is, um, the regular, the local regulators to be able to have our say when they're asking for consultations. So we also should be supporting these organizations that are defending our spectrum. And we also should be highlighting amateur radio's public service record and the innovation just to justify keeping these bands. So a partial update for amateur radio operators, we still need to be on top of these issues because we don't want to lose access to our valuable spectrum. Now, what AST Space Mobile originally proposed was pretty crazy with what they actually wanted. I detailed all of what they were after in this video over here.